Perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, nice to meet all of you. And then, you know, thank you for having me today. I really appreciate that. And then thank you, Bridget, for that wonderful introduction and, and, uh, and kicking us off today. So yes, I will share my screen here um, and, and we'll start to dive in. Okay. Uh, I think that should be coming through okay. I got the questions out of the way, so we're not seeing that, which is always good. Uh, they'll be on my other screen. So yes, thank you. Um, I'm David Obrega. I am the uh, current manager of business development um, and our account-based marketing program here at Vidyard. Um, and I've been with the company for about a year now. Um, and uh, my background before that is, you know, I've been in sales for the last 10, 12 years uh, at various different roles, uh, running from full cycle sales uh, as an AE. Um, territory manager is more of like a CSM and a traditional like, you know, on the road sales job. Um, and, uh, and been in several different uh, sectors from, you know, telecom to, um, you know, tech and, and uh, some, we'll say, manufactured uh, consumer goods as well. So a little bit about me. Um, today, what I really want to focus on is, you know, as the first slide uh, talks about is, um, you know, having the video enabled sales team. I want to spend today to chat with you about where uh, video can play a great role in your sales process. Um, and how I can help deliver some value um, to you know where where it will be effective in terms of prospecting, um, running your sales calls, even customer success. Um, I do want to make today's session as interactive as I can, and so you know I have a couple areas where we're gonna, I, you know I'll stop, ask some questions, um, and I want to make it as relevant as I can for the group today. So if there's you know uh, there's a couple workshopping areas. So if you want to figure out how Vidyard uh, or video specifically can be fit into your sales process and you want to kind of have a, a little bit of a workshop or discussion about you know your your product or service or, or how you're doing things today and, and where video could fit in i do have some sections uh throughout the presentation so we can uh we can kind of look at that as a group i do want to keep it you know it's uh as relevant as i can for the audience and and happy to have some some great discussions as we go okay so to start off, you know, sales and crushing quotas is, is not easy. Um, and generally speaking, um, you know, the world has changed a lot in the last eight months. And, you know, the, the, the best way to get from, you know, point A to point B is, is a straight line. Um, and, and really, I want to, again, the, going back to that, that idea of, of where video can fit in, where it works, where it doesn't. Um, but I think, you know, one of the stats that we were looking at was we were talking to some of our customers and some of our prospects. And, you know, specifically, you know, in this um, remote world uh, that, we're, that we're in right now with, with, with you know, COVID-19, a lot of companies have actually gone from saying, you know, Vidyard is, you know, we had 30% of, of, of the companies that we asked, you know, thinking that something like video, a tool like video, and I'll, I'll be specific and say asynchronous video, because I think a lot of people, is, you know, most people say Zoom is absolutely necessary. But the ability to add video and asynchronously to your sales process um, you know, 30% of customers would have said that that was in a, a business requirement, just like they would need Salesforce, just like they would need, you know, an HR software for payroll and all those things. Um, and, you know, in the last eight months, we've seen that number jump. Uh, it was actually something that came out to us from G2 Crowd um, to like about 80% that considers, you know, some type of video tool to be integral to, to their sales process. So today, again, just on that topic, we're going to take a look at, um, you know, how Vidyard can help you hit the numbers you're looking for. Um, and we'll dive into the agenda here, which is basically just kind of how I wanted to set up today's workflow. So starting off where video can be used, um, prospecting, working through a deal, customer success, you know, full cycle sales there, um, types of videos you can use, you know, if it's going to be a direct one-to-one -one video, if you want to have something that's a little bit more generic, um, or using just some like gen generic marketing material. And then that's when we're really going to dive in and take the different, um, types of videos and the different areas video can be used. And we'll dive into where does that play in? When should you use it? What should a cadence look like? Do you want video at the front of the sales cycle? Do you want it at the back of the sales cycle? But where can you put it to maximize its effectiveness? Um, I'll share with you some video best practices. Um, for anyone interested in how to use Vidyard, I actually will, will share a link towards the end. I had one of my team members quit, make a quick, I think it's a six minute video on, on how to download the tool and start using video. So I'll share that as a link with all of you if, if, if that's of interest. Um, and then again, throughout, uh, as we start covering some of these topics, um, you know, by all means, stop me, raise, raise a hand, uh, throw up a question, because I would, I would certainly love to make this as interactive as possible um, for all of you. Just pulling up the chat, there we go. Helpful. Perfect. Okay, so 
I think the best place to start off is, you know, when it comes to video and when it comes to business development and where video fits in, I think the first place that people think of that video can be used is, is prospecting. You know, I'm trying to make a, an impact. I want to personalize an email. And essentially, you know, most people think of what, you know, prospecting looks like, and they think of something that looks kind of like this, um, you know, and, and a, just a very, you know, word formatted heavy, whether it's, you know, a, a, you know, here's why we should have a conversation. Here are some times I'm free. Um, and, you know, this is what a lot of, you know, companies are, are sending and has been the norm for a very long time. And really what, you know, we're trying to do with video is create something that allows you to connect, stand out from the noise and really leave a lasting impression with that prospect. So they consume the information um, and the most important information. And so we're talking about, you know, the, the first thing that comes to mind is usually going from something like that to something that looks a little bit more like this. Um, and having something that's a little bit more engaging, you can kind of embed this into an email. So you might have like two or three bullet points um, and then, you know, your message is captured via video and something that really stands out to your audience and your prospect um, to really help you form that connection. So we'll dive in here. Um, I'm kind of curious to maybe see a show of hands or, or if you want to use the chat or the Q&A, but I'm curious to know at this point if anyone um, has actually started using video in their sales process, if this is you know, new to everyone in the room. Um, some people absolutely love video in their sales process, but would love to hear from the group and just get a little idea of, of of, of how you are prospecting today, if video plays a part, um, and, and if, if you've seen some success with it. So you can use the raise hand feature at the bottom of your screen, if you'd like uh, to answer the question that way, or even if you'd like, uh, please unmute yourself and uh, just contribute in that way. So you can do that now, just so that we can see by a show of those hands, who has started using video. Doesn't have to be with video. And and for context, I'm I'm thinking asynchronously. Like I know a lot of people in, in this current world are using things like Zoom to have meetings exactly like this one. Um, but I'm just wondering if anyone has found like a tool like like Vidyard or BombBomb or or maybe it's just marketing material that you're leveraging that you have like a great company overview that you've been starting to add and and put into some of your your follow up cadences um, and seen some success there. And if it's new to everyone, that's great too because we're going to dive in and I'll give you all some great tips. Okay, so I see Raymond Lee has said he would like to use video, so he hasn't started yet. Anybody else want to uh, throw in a hand or? It's the morning, I get it. <laughs> We've got a quiet this morning. Is everybody having trouble finding the raise hand feature? Oh, I see the hands coming up. So Jennifer's done it. Oh, Dave, uh, Jennifer's unmuted. Yeah, no, I just to... Uh... I'm not, I'm not uh, engaged in a sales process, um, but I've been using Loom um, as a video tool and I'm looking to use it more to um, manage communications like with um, existing relationships. So right. that's something I'm going to be playing around with more. Um, and uh, yeah. Cool, yeah. So like a, like, like a customer success, you know, like keeping customers engaged and getting them updated information. That's great. Yeah, instead of really long emails that I usually write. <laughs> totally, yeah. Love it. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for that, Jennifer. Great and, use case. Uh, yeah, we've got some folks in the chat there who are, are weighing in. So Raymond says he'd like to use video. David says only use video in social media feeds so far. Uh, Alina from The Forge, uh, thanks for joining Alina, says love to hear more about Vidyard. We use some video on social media. Uh, and Raymond says... Uh, Doodly looks interesting, but it gets expensive with all the add-ins I hear. Yeah, I haven't I haven't heard of Doodly much. I'll be honest, like Vidyard has a free tool. So does Loom, so do a lot of our competitors. There's generally like, you know, yes, there's a Teams package, which is designed for businesses to enable a marketing and sales team. But there's also a free tool that allows you to start making one-to-one -one videos. Uh, there's no catch with Vidyard. Um, I think it, you can record up to an hour, which when I get to best practices, I'll tell you is a bad idea <laughs> and it should be kept to a minute or two. Um, but uh, it, it does let you record a long thing. So if you have a tech presentation that you want to take someone through and, and share it with a, a prospect, it does. But yeah, so video Vidyard does have a free tool. So it's super easy to dive into um, if you're just looking at starting using video uh, in your process. And, and there's some other great competitors out there that, that have it. I, you know, I saw Loom pop up um, and, uh, and yeah, it just 
I'm, I'm excited about video and, and how you choose to go about starting to use video. If, if you see some value, I'm just excited to, to help, help, uh, you know, get, get uh, everyone some information there to help them out. So cool. I thought that, you know, I heard the customer success use case. I heard the social media use case, which are, are great use cases. You know, there you're trying to cast a broad net and create something that's compelling to, to cater to, you know, your, your, your LinkedIn presence, your Facebook presence. Um, so we'll talk about generic videos. Um, there's also, of course, one-to-one -one videos where maybe you're sending it in social media, but you're sending it to someone specifically. And I'll talk about how you can kind of bridge that gap as well. Um, but generally speaking, yeah, the, as far as when we start off, most people start off with um, looking at Vidyard and going from that big text clunky um, message, whether it's on social media or email and, and moving to something a little bit like this, which the information is easy to digest. Um, so when we're looking at Vidyard for prospecting, I will also, I'll get to the, the I think the customer success use cases next. I'm, I'm going to go through all three here. But really, it's, it's kind of like the video you see on the side there. Um, you can create custom messages, connect with your prospect in a, in a much more intimate way. Um, and then the nice thing is with analytics, you can track who has opened it, who hasn't. Um, yes, we use that in our follow-up cadences, specifically more so on, we'll say, the outbound side. I'll talk a little bit too about, you know, inbound leads versus outbound leads and, and you know, different things I would suggest using for each of them. Um, but yeah, we absolutely have an inner cadence. If I see that I get a video notification that someone's watched my video um, and I'm, I'm able to, um, I might call it. I'll be like, hey, I saw that you watched 50% of my video. What did you think? Um, um, if you think getting that type of information for your prospecting efforts would be helpful, love to have a conversation and just using that as, as a conversation piece. Um, because is it weird that they know that I watched your video? Maybe, but at the end of the day, like, isn't that helpful? And isn't that what a lot of salespeople would like to know? And, and, and you know, they can definitely relate to that um, in that capacity. So when it comes to prospecting, generally we're thinking here is, you know, you're gonna have your inbound or outbound funnel. You're gonna be making, you know, one-to-one -one videos, um, you could be creating videos that are, um, you know, on social media. Maybe you're connecting with a prospect. They haven't got back to you via email. I will say one trend we have noticed a lot in, um, you know, this work from home environment is we haven't seen as much success with cold calling. That's definitely on a bit of a, a decline. Not to say that I, we don't use it in our cadences. We absolutely do. But we've seen a much, uh, we've seen a huge uptick in success um, on social media. So like when we get to the, the the prospecting stage, you know, some of our cadences are like email outreach with a video, um, connect on LinkedIn, take that same video you made as a one-to-one -one connection if they connect with you and add that into, you know, your messaging with that, with that person so you can get them to see the video on LinkedIn. Um, and so, so prospecting can be done, you know, in the traditional email sense or, or social media is a great way to, to play that up as well. If you want to cast a broad net, um, you can absolutely have like marketing content where you um, place content on your social media. Um, a great example is a lot of my team will do a webinar. They'll, they'll work with the marketing team to attend uh, a webinar. And what they'll do like two days before the webinar is they'll make a video and they'll post it to their feed, just basically saying, so excited to be, um, you know, hosting this piece of, you know, this event uh, or this, you know, this, this section of the webinar, or just it's, you know, excited to be at the webinar as an attendee. We look forward to connecting with a lot of people. We'll be at the Vidyard booth. Please come and find us. Um, we'd love to chat with you and just put that out on social media as like a general message to, um, to everyone uh, on, in their network that, that, you know, there's an event and, and they can connect with us from there. Um, and you also might just have marketing material, which is just like, Hey, this is a new thing about our product. Wanted to make sure everyone was in the loop, um, and you can and you can add that to your prospecting as well, and it can be super super helpful and, and impactful. The next use case is, um, you know, when I when I say that a lot of people think of video and prospecting and and or social media, I think is another you know that's a top of mind idea for sure. Um, you can certainly also use it a lot during the sales process. So. I know there's a, a, a range of, of, you know, in the audience that might have, you know, an entrepreneur who's doing, you know, front to back sales on their own and they're doing full cycle themselves. So they're doing the business development, finding the opportunities and working with those customers to close the deal. Um, you may be in a situation where maybe you have a business development rep and they're passing the leads to you or a sales team. So I'll talk about some strategies on, on how Vidyard and video specifically fits in throughout the sales process, which is, you know, right, right here um, and not just the standard social media and, and uh, prospecting idea. So we're talking about video during the sales process. It's just about keeping clients engaged, making sure that you can stand out above your competitor, giving them information in a way that's compelling. And I will say, especially now that, you know, door-to-door -door sales, face-to-face sales is not an option. 
helps you create an emotional, personal connection that is not really capable and puts you in the, in front of them again and again and again. If they watch this video, they can share it with their team. Um, and, and it allows you to be in their, in their presence again over the sales process um, and get to know you and, 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 you know, really, really stand out. So for us at Vidyard, the first video that we send is, you know, I, I manage the business development team. So the way it's set up is we have a full a sales team and then the business development side. So my reps will, will work through the prospecting funnel and then they'll pass it over to the sales team once that that customer is ready to take, um, you know, a meeting or a demo. Part of that handoff is a video introduction from the AE basically reiterating what the SDR or BDR has taken as their notes. So that way it shows that Vidyard has communicated internally. The customer's not about to get on a call that's gonna have to go through a brand new discovery call all over again, um, because you know the process is the SDR team takes all their notes, passes that over to the AE, kind of has a little bit of a debrief with the AE to make sure the, the AE understands you know, what, what's on the plate. And then the AE kind of paraphrased that back saying, hey, can't wait to talk to you on Wednesday. My name is David Nobrega. Um, and it sounds like, you know, you're looking at getting started with video for your sales team and prospecting. Um, really, really excited to talk with you, talk to you then. Doesn't have to be long. The, the message I will always share with you is video does not need to be difficult. It should be very, very simple. Um, you know, a whiteboard, uh, a simple background and, and off you go, you're ready to go. Um, it, I, I'll show you some fun examples. Uh, you know, I have I have a good one that that someone made, um, but it doesn't always need to be you know this grandiose. It's as easy as just turning your camera on, saying a few words. Doesn't need to be perfect. It it can be very 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 simple. Um, so just a you know it takes about a minute to record. Introduction gets sent off, and it already makes a nice intro for the AE even before they meet the prospect. Um, then as you move through the sales cycle. Um, there's a lot of great ways you can put video and, you know, if you remember that big blurb of text that I sent uh, at the beginning, you know, that also, in addition to looking like a prospect email, could also be a, a demo or a, a sales meeting follow-up. Thanks for talking with me today. I think our company can help your company with X, Y, and Z and some bullet points. Here's our follow-up steps. Um, look forward to, you know, you know, the usual, the usual cadence of, 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 of sales demo follow-up. Video is a great place to put in here because now if they want to share it internally, because maybe you connected with some stakeholders, um, you can encourage them to share it with other stakeholders in the, in the, in the, in the business, gives you the option to share your screen as well. So you can actually like articulate certain points beyond just words. Don't get me wrong. I, I know that, you know, at Vidyard, um, you know, it's, it's that adage where, you know, if you're holding a hammer, everything, everything starts to look like a nail. There are absolutely some places if you want to do like a tech comparison and, and contrast, like, Here's what, you know, and I, I want to actually lay things out in a bullet pointed format so it's easy to consume visually. That absolutely has a place. But if it's just, uh, you know, thanks for chatting with me today. Look forward to connecting with your sales manager about such and such. Here's how I think we can, you know, a little bit of a, a value prop that you want to stick um, into it and then letting them share that with their team. There's great ways that you can put video in your sales follow up. The biggest one that we see success on is when it comes to contracting. Oftentimes, you know, I'll say even as a, coming from an AE myself, I hated when, you know, you'd go through a, con a sales demo with a, with a customer. Maybe you'd run out of time. Maybe you didn't get to pricing. Maybe pricing wasn't even on the agenda for that meeting. But then like three days later, it's like, hey, can you show me the cost? Then you're in an awkward situation where you can put the price on, a, on an email, but I don't think that's a great way to present pricing um, because it's just, at that point, it's just you know a PDF with a with a with a price tag on it. It doesn't really look compelling. It doesn't carry the same value that it would have if you were able to talk to the customer and get some feedback from them. So, whether it's having to go in cold for pricing or whether it's just sharing someone pricing because you had a pricing call, being able to articulate that back to them over video is um is is a huge 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 leg up um, in terms of just sending something that's flat. So with Vidyard, you have two options for and most video hosting programs, but you have you have two options. One is just you know screen share like we are right now, and kind of like what you see in the in the thumbnail there, where it's you know just your head um, and just you speaking. Or you can also do a screen share where you appear like a little bubble in the corner of the screen, and then you can actually share your screen, so you can actually highlight certain things, scroll through a price sheet, and do like we'll say a, an informative session where you take them through a PowerPoint deck or you take them through a, a price quote. So that one I find is a big game changer, and it allows you to be in their face and connecting with them and kind of walking them through the price quote and adding value um, to to that email. I think I'm not sure if I heard someone unmute, um, but uh, but yeah, that, that that's 
No, uh, I wasn't muted from, from what I can tell. But if anybody has any questions at this point, feel free yeah. to unmute yourself and ask. Um, otherwise, I'll keep an eye on it. Cool. Uh, and yeah, use the hand raise feature. I'm, I'm very, very happy to, to stop. If, if you want to talk about you know, more of, of the sales process, we will. We'll, there's, a, there's a kind of a workout session that we'll, we'll dive into. Um, but yeah, if this, sounds, if this sounds great or if, you know, if you've had the challenge of you know, having to kind of flip someone a, a, a PDF with your, your pricing information on it and it hasn't necessarily stuck the landing the way that you hoped it would have, um, video can be a great spot um, to, to, help, to help with that process. Uh, hey, David, it's Mark Elliott. Hey, Mark. And I have a question on, you know, I do find, for example, I do find as an example, when you're doing a quote or proposal, and often it's better to, to walk the client through it so you can address any issues or concerns or get some feedback so they're not, you know, stewing on the other side or, you know. Totally. What's what's the what's the balance, though? Like, would you say, hey, do you, do you, is it from a sales process? Do you try to do, you know, in-person you know, first, or do you send the video? Like, how do you, how do you balance that, that kind of, that, that off? So, so yeah, a hundred percent. I think the gold standard is always going to be get the customer on the phone and walk them through a price proposal. Um, do it, do it live, do it with them, have them on a zoom call, you know, hopefully, you know, everyone has their cameras on so you can kind of get some visual cues and feedback. Um, and, and, you know, don't be afraid to ask the hard questions. You know, we're, we're kind of, you know, diving into, you know, my, my sales process, but, you know, validate, is this what you expected? Um, is this, you know, in alignment with what your expectations were and, and, and make sure you don't, you know, pull back on the hard questions. Um, you know, I even sometimes go as far as being like, you know, this is the proposal. Um, is it in alignment with your budget? I know you're working with, with more team members here. Um, but you know, how does, how does Vidyard fit in? How does, how does this proposal fit into what else you've seen on the market? Um, is this the right product for you? And, 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 you know, challenge the customer cause you can get that live hundred percent gold standard way to do it every time. Um, Sometimes you get, you don't get that opportunity though. Sometimes it's, you know, a, a deal where they're just like, Hey, send me a price proposal, mm, you know, can't, and, and there's, and you're struggling to get them on the phone. Um, and that's where, you know, I'd say is the second uh, step having Vidyard is a, a, at least a video walkthrough. So you can add, you know, value points as you go through, like, this is, you know, what we talked about. Um, I think, you know, based on what you said, this is what we have to offer. And, and you know, I, I remember there's alignment about X and Y. And it at least lets you kind of control the flow and at least be there pseudo presenting that they can see it. And it's not just like a PDF where they may miss a piece of information. Oftentimes people are just like flicking through a PDF or, or, or your email. And like there was this, you know, preamble of, of here's what I want to show you but they skip it because they just want to see what the bottom dot, like the, the number in the bottom right corner is and, and you miss the, and you miss the email this way, at least, yes, they can skim through your video. You will know that, <laughs> which is also nice to know. Um, but at least this way, it, it gives you the opportunity to control the flow of information. And if you have the opportunity to do both, do both. I, I would hundred percent, if you can get them on that gold standard, get them on the call, take them through the price proposal and then follow up with video to do the same thing with the attached PDF. I think that's, um, that's the ideal way to do it. Thank you. Cool. And, uh, and then, so that's during the sales process. Like I said, it can be used during handoff. It can be used to articulate challenging information. Like let's say you do the demo, it goes well. Two days later, they come back with like, oh, I forgot, how does this work? Or um, I know we didn't have enough time. How, do you, how, do you, how would you do this with your product or your service? Um, that's another great place to add video. It ties in very strongly to the customer success use case as well. But it can be really, really helpful for following up with complex things in which you're having trouble um, getting maybe on a call, or maybe it doesn't make sense to get onto a two minute, three minute call. Cause it's literally something that you can do in a two minute video. Like, mm, did your product, I, I can't remember, but was your product able to do this? Oh yeah, here it is. Two minute video, walk through it, walk through it. There you go. Um, and very, very, very easy to, uh, to do like those one-off videos like that. Cool. And then the last uh, area where, you know, you can use video is, you know, you've, you've spent a lot of time trying to find the customer. Now you've worked them through the sales cycle and now you have the customer and you want to keep them happy. So Vidyard can be used great there as well. Um, you know, having a strong presence on social media, I would say is, is, is it helps all three of these stages. You know, people want to make sure that they're with a company that seems progressive and, you know, they're engaging with your content and, and, you know, you can show that, that you're, um, you know, a leader in your space um, and, and, you know, your, your expertise. Um, but it can also be great for just creating compelling and, and personalized content for your different um, accounts and keeping your customers happy. Um, sometimes, you know, customers won't always have the time to have meetings. So this gives you the option to have an asynchronous meeting. Maybe you do like a quarterly review um, and there's something, you know, top of mind that you want to share with that client. 
Um, you're having trouble getting your calendar synced. Maybe it's a, a product feature that just came out that you know your client will be interested in. Um, but this is a great way where you can record information, one-to-one -one video, get it over to your prospects. Um, we talked about one-to-one -one video. I, I'll, I'll, I'll jump ahead here in terms of types of video. Not everything needs to be one-to-one. -one. Let's say we're talking about like an account and you're doing business with Vidyard and you wanted to do you know, your quarterly check-in um, rather than necessarily making me a video, the head of marketing a video, the head of sales a video and trying to make all these different videos, you can just make a video that's like, hey Vidyard, really loved working with you over the past year. Um, you know, these are some of the great success metrics we've seen over, over the year. Um, maybe it's a marketing objective you had, sales objective you had, maybe it's a combination um, of, of all those things, but you know, you can talk to the different stakeholders and then just send them everyone that same video. And that definitely sticks the mark um, as you've kind of genericized it, but still tailored it to that organization, which I would say is a big win and, and saves you a lot of time and, and definitely gets the message across. Um, it might just be a product update. So maybe your marketing team has created this new product feature and you just wanna make sure that all of your customers get it. Another great place to add video. So if you want to, rather than just you know typing out a blog post or a news article about um, recent updates and it almost just looks like patch notes um, or like update notes, this way you can make a video. And if there's a cool experience like, hey, I know a lot of customers were looking for this type of functionality um, or were interested in this, we've now made that available um, and here's how it looks and here's how you can get started. Um, uh, you could also do things like promotions if you're more, you know, a service oriented business and you wanted to have like, you know, a, a Christmas blowout or you wanted to do something that was, you know, to, to talk about a, a service or product launch. Those are great, you know, generic videos that maybe you'd want to send to all of your prospect or all of your customer base. Um, another big one too is um, you'd be amazed at how helpful it is, but for, you know, support and troubleshooting questions, um, you know, Oftentimes I, I have you know, a lot of conversation with my SDR team to look for trends because it is wildly time consuming if 10 people ask the same question. And you know, in our case, we would generally make a video to follow up. But if I'm making that same video 10 times or like 10 different people are having to make that video, that's a great asset to create and be able to share with your customers and, and deflect having to answer some of those questions because a one video, a video that you make once that's 10 minutes long or five minutes long can answer all of those questions and you can keep it as a repertoire for your whole sales team or for yourself and you can, and you can share it again and again and again. Um, and then it can also be customer enablement. It can just be general, hey, I want to help you be successful. I'm, you know, Vidyard prides itself on, on making sure that we are seen as you know, video experts and are coaching our customers and giving them tons of value beyond just what the product is. But you know, having sessions exactly like this one where we can look at a customer, here's what you're doing today with video, here's what we can help you with. And tons of customer enablement can be, can be a great source through video where you can actually you know, take a look at maybe what the customer's doing and what they've been successful with, talking about that and saying, here's what I think you can do and showing them um, you know, the art of the possible, if you will. Um, that, that can, be, uh, can be thrown into the mix. So that's kind of just an overview of, of how video can fit in, where it can fit in, different types of videos you can make, um, and, and how video can literally be used throughout the entire sales process, and it doesn't need to be just one thing. Now, you know, if, if one of those gravitates towards you, and I noticed there were some questions about social media, don't, don't get the idea that you have to do all of this or, or, it, or it's not good. Like any one of these can be very, very effective. We'll, we'll talk a little bit later as to, you know, what are you trying to improve on? Um, is it your social media presence? Is it your prospecting, um, you know, connection rate? Is it your sales process? You want to tighten that up. You want to, you know, win more deals and win them faster. Video can be used at any one of those stages for, for a great result. And it, it don't, you know, by any means think that it needs to be all or nothing. Um, you know, video is, is better than no video in a, in a lot of cases. And, and you can feel free to dive in at whatever challenge that you're having that's the most relevant for your business. So before we dive into like, we'll say the first workshop where we actually take a look at, you know, building out a sales cadence, um, maybe it's a, it can, and this can be a cadence, you know, I, I've kind of thought about it with the prospecting lens, but this can 100% be a marketing cadence. It can be a prospecting cadence. It could even be a customer success cadence. So like I've onboarded a customer and here over the next six months, these are our check-in points. Um, and, and here's where I think video is going to fit in. So I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll dive it. That's the next uh, slide. So we'll have a great, you know, I'm hoping to have a good, you know, um, Q and A and, and, and chat session with everyone. But when it comes to types of video, you can definitely make one-to-one -one videos. That's where I'm, I'm making a video that's specific to an individual. Um, I, you know, personalize, personalize, personalize. It's great for, you know, when you're trying to target a key persona. 
Um, it's also great when engagement is high. So you don't want to like, I will say a, a very bad video to make would be like, I just get off a sales call with you. And rather than like me sending you a video directly, I just sent you like a canned, you know, thanks for sitting on my demo today. Here's, you know, the company overview like that. That's a jarring experience. And I would say that's definitely not where you'd want to put generic video. So if you have great one two way engagement with a, with a prospect, personalized video, one to one video, that is that is absolutely the gold standard. Um, it's also great when you're trying to prospect into key accounts. So let's say you're following a company on LinkedIn. They recently hired a new VP of sales. You've been trying to get, you know, to talk to them for a little while and you can make a connection saying, you know, I, I, I saw this new article, news article about you guys have been doing X, Y, and Z or congrats on your promotion. It sounds like, you know, you're, you're going to have, uh, you know, uh, an exciting time ahead of you taking on this role as, as VP of sales for company X. would love to chat with you if you have a video strategy in place and, and if there's anything that, uh, you know, we can do to help you out. Um, those are great one-to-one -one videos because they're personalized. You're speaking directly to that audience. You can go really wacky here. We were, there was one example of, of, of uh, there's one BDR at Vidyard who was prospecting a recording studio and her and two other of her colleagues literally wrapped out a prospecting email because it was a music comp a studio. Um, and I think they did some, some song and dance trying to just be as relevant as they could to be that. Um, I'm hesitant to kind of sometimes share that story because like, yes, that's, we'll say, you know, gold tier a plus plus but don't put yourself in a box where it's like well if i can't do that it's video's not worth it video most of my videos look exactly like what you see right now um i'll give you some you know best practices um, in terms of how to make your video look good um so you don't have things like this and i'll show you a little secret that i have i literally have a post-it note on top of my computer that just blocks out a pot light that i have above and just just little things like that that's really all you need to worry about um as far as you know how you should look and how you should present yourself just keep it your authentic self don't worry if you're saying things like mm's or ums it should not feel scripted it should just be a genuine message why you want to attack that person and as authentic as possible so yes you can have a lot of fun with it but yes if you want to make like 40 50 60 videos a day like we have some maybe 60 might be a bit of a stretch but maybe 40 one-to-one -one videos a day like our aes do our sales reps where it's just connecting with their prospects you know banging off 40 videos that are just hey david want to chat with you about x y and z hey steven want to chat with you about x y and z and getting through that in an hour totally acceptable and 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 super super impactful um generic videos these are a little bit less personalized these are my things you might want to use on social media where you're trying to just cast a broad net and kind of share cool things maybe about yourself cool things about your company um you're trying to maybe sh it's more informative it's less personalized so you're trying to you know capture an audience intentions maybe your uh, attention rather maybe you're trying to share something compelling something that will start a little bit of controversy and, and you know get people engaged so that they reach out to you comment on your post things like that um, so that's, that is totally okay to have something that's less personalized in that space. And then there's marketing where it's your, you've created a, you know, video overview of your product or service, and you're just going to fire that out into like every single person on your list and, and see what comes in to, to test for engagement. So that's a great way to identify prospects. So definitely different ways to record video and they all have a different spot in the process. I would say if you're doing one-to-one -one prospecting and like, you know, sending a LinkedIn message to someone directly and you just stick this in, uh, in the marketing category, doesn't necessarily make a great impression. It just looks like you're sending a video that's on your website. Um, whereas it would be much more impactful to like just, you know, not say that you can't send them that video eventually, but if you're just trying to make a connection and get the conversation started, so much more imp impactful just to talk to that person direct and and say, you know, you know, Mark, I, I, uh, I saw your profile on LinkedIn, saw that you do this awesome stuff with, you know, Innovation Factory and thought, uh, you know, uh, I'd love to chat with you about how video can, can help you, uh, or, you know, reach more of your audience. Um, and thought you might be interested to talk and learn a little bit more. Let me know if that's of interest to you and, and on you go. Um, and that's that is that's a perfectly great video that we have tons of success with. And we, like I said, we bang those out 40 at a time per rep every day. <laughs> so those are the different types of video. Those are the different places you can stick video in. And now that we've kind of gone over that, what I'm hoping to do here is, um, I guess I kind of talked through, through some of this, but this is, you know, your first step. Where do Where does video fit in my sales process? What's the messaging I'm using today? And what's the messaging I'd want to use for that video? How do I produce great videos? Like I said, it doesn't, doesn't have to be complicated. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. Um, and then what are your strategies for sharing? Where do I want to put these out? Is it going to be one-to-one? -one? Is it going to be a marketing? Is it going to be social media? And this is just looking at your different channels. And this is just kind of like the step-by-step -step kind of walkthrough to go through to figure out what you're doing today and, and how to fit video in. So we'll go to this X slide here. And you know, here's where I want to you know, chat with the group. 
I've given you some ideas on, on what we do, but let's chat and kind of hopefully open this up for a little bit of conversation and, you know, people can put up their hand and, and, and jump in here. But, you know, where does video fit in into a sales cadence? Where does it fit into your cadence? Um, I'll say the one caveat here is if you notice, I've said first touch to call or close. I know it's a, 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 a dynamic group of, of people with different interests. So if, if first touch for you is social media, what's the result you want to drive from that interaction? Is it more people following you on social media? Um, is it you want that person to interact with you? If you're a BDR um, or you have a team of BDRs and you want to help them from first touch to qual where they can hand that off to their AE, great. We can, that's, that's a good you know, walk through there. Um, or if maybe if you're doing full cycle sales, you own the BDR process, you own the sales cycle, and it's where can I put video in right from the beginning, right to the very end. And same thing goes for customer success. Like I've just inherited this new customer. They just signed up. Um, what are some of the touch points I want to put? And what are some of the regular cadences that we have? But um, yeah, let's, let's, let's dive in. You know, tell me a little bit about what, um, you know, how you would be looking at video in your process today. You know, if it's a, if it's a customer success facing role, if it's a prospecting role, if you're wanting to enable your sales team, but talk a little bit about, you know, where um, you're focused on, on adding video. Um, and, and maybe let's like work through an example of how video can fit into a cadence that you would use um, for that process. Does anyone want to be the first brave soul to go forward? <laughs> David, David, I know you can. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, we yeah. can hear you, David. Okay, Hi, David. Uh, for myself, you know, the biggest one of the biggest challenges for me in the, the new uh, abnormal is, um, you know, I used to meet a lot of new people networking. And of course, that's a big challenge now. So I, my, my first inclination is just to do a, a you know, a personally directed follow up video. If there's someone that's, you know, commented on some of the content I've posted uh, with some of the, with my own clients or, or for my own clients to, to let them know that they can, they can comment directly in a video to someone if they have a question. Yeah. That is an absolute great first point contact. I'll even give you a, a cool tip of something that we've been embracing um, moving to a remote world. We've obviously used to do a ton of in-person events. Um, I have two of my uh, uh, SDR BDR team that to try to create that similar vibe, you know, well, well, you know, you, the point you've made in terms of, you know, first touch is, you know, we're talking about a follow-up step, which is great. Um, but what you can even do to kind of help create that in-person connection at the conference, what my team is doing is they're going to the virtual event and rather than, you know, sitting at our, you know, virtual event booth, hoping that people come in, they're literally jumping on different, you know, sessions, um, looking at the audience of those sessions. So they're trying to find sessions that are relevant, like, you know, how to, you know, get better engagement from your customers, prospecting one-on-one sessions that are relevant to Vidyard. Um, they're diving into those sessions, looking at people who are, we'll say, engaged, asking questions, um, offering cool tidbits of information. And then they're literally going into, some conferences have the ability to have, we'll say like a chat portal behind the scenes where you can just connect one-to-one -one with the attendees. Yeah. And they're creating personalized videos being like, hey, I thought that was a really, really you know, uh, great question you asked in that session about prospecting 101. Wondering if you've ever, you know, on the topic of prospecting, have you ever thought of using video in your sales process? Um, and if you'd like to learn more and, and, uh, and share some cool ideas back and forth, feel free to connect with me. And now it's not just, you know, you, some person typing in a box, you're posting a link, you're creating that, you know, trying to get back to what that in-person connection felt like being at the yes. conference together. Um, and they've had a ton of great success connecting with a lot of people. Some conferences don't have that functionality. So they're just using LinkedIn on the back end to like go on LinkedIn, try to connect to those people um, and, and maximize their time at the conference. But we're, 100% trying to break out of that mold where it's like there's I'm at a conference it's a virtual event people aren't coming to my booth like they used to how do I engage this audience how can I maximize my time spent here and you know grab the attention of some of these people and video fits in so 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 well um, uh, on a one-to-one -one sense there to connect with with different members of the of the um, audience or of the conference well and even more you can share a bit of your own uh, personality on a video where 100%. no matter what you do you cannot do that in a a text reply message. No chance. Totally. So, you know, if we're looking at this from a conference point of view and a traditional sales process where you might, maybe it was door to door, maybe it was virtual events, you know, it was the usual, you know, I come from uh, an industry where I, I sold equipment for garment decoration. So silk screening equipment, um, letters and numbers, um, you know, vinyl heat presses and stuff. And, you know, my job was, uh, I was on the road all day long in Southwestern Ontario. I'd, I'd visit my clients face to face. 
Um, I would sometimes just do drop-ins. I would also try to just drop into, you know, if I saw a silk screening shop while I was driving down the road that wasn't a customer, I would just pop in and say hi. Um, and yes, we did a ton of virtual events. So this is a great place that you can make a strong connection. Like you said, share your personality. So when we're talking about, you know, the conference space, let's say your first touch is just connecting with people you think that would be a good uh, ideal customer profile for you and trying just to gain, you know, some momentum, gain some connectivity with people, putting yourself out there. Um, and then, yes, if you have some of those connections, um, either, you know, do a Zoom call and, and take them through a sales process or B, follow up like, hey, you were at this conference. Um, you know, it sounds like, uh, you know, the topic of the conference was X, Y, and Z. Um, this is, you know, why we were there and, and thought we'd be a good fit to connect with you. And you can absolutely do it as a follow up to, connections you've made or people that you'd like to get once you get like that lead attendee list post-conference. Great. Cool. Thank you. Those are great suggestions. Thanks for, for the commentary there, David. Is there anybody else who would like to weigh in? You can raise the, your hand to cue yourself up or just unmute your mic and feel free. I'll also give some options. Whereas, you know, if you don't necessarily want to take the plunge, if you want to just put in the chat, if you want to just kind of go through a generic prospecting cadence, or you want to go through a generic customer onboarding cadence, or you want to go through a generic um, customer success cadence, and, and you know you don't necessarily want to want to you know you know do it live one to one, um, by all means just put the type of cadence that you would like to chat about in in the chat, um, and I can kind of walk through some best practices um, on on how I would approach where video fits in. Um, and how I would go about, you know, prospecting or or customer success or any of those. Maybe it's a social media cadence, and, and you know, we'll, we'll we'll workshop it on the fly, and, and we'll we'll think of something cool that you can do for social media. Um, I'll need a little bit of context on on what you're doing today and what outcomes you're looking to drive. Um, but but yeah, throw up a, a type of generic prospecting, sure. So when it comes to generic prospecting, um, I'm going to jump to the next slide because it it. I think it's, it's, yes, there's generic prospecting, but there's also, you know, being clever and tailored to it. So we'll, we'll jump back to this slide, but I'll go here for a second. And I think when it comes to prospecting, you know, it also is important to rationalize the scenario. Is this a lead that's come through on your website that's hit, you know, the, I want a demo button or contact us? Are you following up to someone that you met at a conference? Is this a meeting request? Is this a connection from someone um, that's like, hey, I think you should talk to so-and-so because of this? Or is this just a straight cold outbound prospecting um, that you're just trying to, you know, you, you've, you've done a, some market research, excuse me, you've done some market research, you figured out who your ideal customer profile is, there's 100 key accounts that you wanna break into and you're trying to know like, okay, here's my attack plan for hitting those 100 accounts. So, you know, inbound versus outbound, but specifically like what is the, what is the case here that we're going for? I'll try to flirt the line between all of these, but I, I wanted to just be specific that, you know, you should have a general sense of the type of cadence we're going to work on. So we dive back to here. I and the, the team at Vidyard are a huge, huge, huge believer, um, especially in Vidyard's case, where it's a very jarring message for me to tell you the value and greatness of using video, but then I send you a flat email that's just text. So for us, it's doubly so important that we like live, eat and breathe video because sometimes seeing is believing. Um, you know, David, to your point about, you know, video, for us seeing, you know, Vidyard and the video at the conference, for a lot of people, it's like, oh man, I never thought of doing this myself. And, and that seeing the video in for us inside of the, the conference is the sales pitch to some degree. Um, it's don't get me wrong. It's still a great way to connect, but it just further for us specifically strengthens our message. So if you can find a clever way of putting, you know, a part of your product into that video, so it, it, it resonates, that's, that's definitely a, a best practice. But so for us, we want to start off to the right foot, whether it's a outbound, um, cold prospect, um, or it's an inbound lead that is, you know, a great customer fit. Step one, I believe, should always, always, always be a video. Um, it gives you a chance to express your personality, show a little bit about yourself. Um, and it's a lot harder to say no to someone when you see their face, you see that they've put in an effort, you know you didn't just get some generic cut paste, um, hello, bracket, first name, bracket, um, cool to see you're working at company, bracket, um, where you know it's just being populated from your Salesforce information. Um, sometimes I, I use the term, you know, um, don't don't be a, a Marketo monkey to my team when we're using generic video, um, because if it's a great customer fit, you know, if it was just going to be generic video, marketing could do that. You can set up, you know, sales cadences where you, it just those emails just get blasted out 
um, uh, again and again and again, and, and you don't need to personalize anything. So if you're going to take the time to reach out to that prospect, I totally think having a, a one-to-one video is, is a great step because at least that person knows you've done it for them. So generic prospecting, inbound or outbound, I think you start off with a video. Um, I think if it's inbound, um, you know, be clever and, and smart and aware of what your customer is asking or prospect is asking. If they're asking for a demo, make sure you're chatting about that. If they're saying they were, they heard about you through a webinar, again, be like, hey, I got your request. Uh, really cool to see that you went to our webinar on Wednesday. Um, this is who I am. This is what we do. I'm hoping to book some time with you this week um, to try to get that meeting booked in. I will also say there's a little bit of a difference in inbound versus outbound. If it's inbound leads, I I generally set up our cadences to be more direct. You've asked for a demo. I'm going to harass you until you get that demo. You've given me permission to do this because you went to our website and you said, contact me. So I'm, I'm, I will say I'm a little bit more assertive in the ask. Um, now, if it's, that's if they ask for a demo. If, um, if it's, um, if it's a, uh, sorry, I was reading the chat. Um, David, it is being recorded. So if you want to dive into this um, later, well, I, I'm sure um, Bridget and the team will make sure we get the recording out um, for anyone who uh, you know wants to to catch up where, where if they had to take a moment to, to break. Um, but um, so yes, if if it's first touch video video all the way, um, and it's just important that you're you're cognizant of the cadence. Um, inbound, yes, go for it. If it's a webinar lead, we tend to err on the side of being like. I don't know if you wanted a demo, you've just engaged with our content. So I don't want to necessarily every single email I send you saying, book time with me, book time with me, book time with me. I mean, you know, they didn't necessarily say that's what they wanted. They've just been watching a lot of your content and information. So those cadences, yes, I still use video, but it's much more like, hey, you're interested in this. I noticed that you've been engaging with some of our content. Would love to chat with you about maybe how you're using this product or service today. Um, answer any questions you have and, and how, you know, what your video strategy might be or what your strategy might be and, and how we can help. And it's a softer ask. I don't want it to say like book a demo with me because maybe that's not where they're at right now. Um, so that's, so it, that's what I'm saying. I'm being cognizant between like inbound demo requests versus I've engaged with their content. When it goes to outbound requests, I would say it's best to still use video on your first step. Here you're though gonna try to like, imagine you were doing a cold call and you wanna drop your value pitch. Um, you know, you're gonna have a strong elevator pitch. Um, this is who I am, this is why I'm reaching out. Something personalized about them on why you've selected them I think is important. Um, otherwise, again, it starts to sound generic. So it's like, you know, I'm really interested in the work that company X does. Um, noticed online that you've recently engaged in this um, you know, this new product piece um, and, you know, it caught my attention. I think that's very cool, the, the market you're working with and then, and then dive into your elevator pitch. Um, and those cadences, I typically try to do a lot of value ads. Again, you're reaching out to them. So it's about getting their attention, getting them hooked. So this is where some of those generic videos, um, yeah, thanks. Um, this is where the generic videos can be very helpful. You don't necessarily want to try to ram a demo down their throat. So it's, it's tons of value adds. Like here's what other, here's a customer story. Could be a video about that. Um, here's how we've been, you know, here's why I think, you know, Vidyard can help you or here's why I think we should have a conversation. Um, but it's, it's a lot of value add in those cadences versus inbound. It's a lot more like you requested a demo, let's chat. Um, we also have some value adds like, hey, check out these Chalk Talks. We have a weekly webinar that we do um, that people can attend. So we'll, we'll put that in there as well to keep them engaged and, and again, try to keep them active. Um, one thing I will say is, you know, sometimes, um, we, we've seen people do like a breakup video. Uh, I think a breakup video is okay. You know, if you've hit the, you know, call or close, you know, how you're closing it out. Um, I think a breakup video is okay if they've engaged with you, especially like if, if they've expressed some interest and then they're, they're not, they're ghosting you. I think it's okay. I think it's a bit of a faux pas when, when you're doing it on, on an outbound or, you know, general information sense. The reality is, all they've done is go to your website. They've looked at some information and you're, and, you're, and you're talking to them or trying to engage with them. To send them a breakup video is weird because they never actually talked to you in the first place. So it, I generally tell my team to annoy because I think it annoys people more than I think. Now, if you're halfway down a sales cycle with someone and then you get ghosted, that can be a great emotional driver to get them to feel a little guilty, come back to you because they, they, they have ghosted you. And, and sometimes, you know, that the emotion of, of seeing you say like, hey, listen, I tried everything. Um, it sounds like video is not the right, the right, not right discussion for you right now. So, you know, if, if, if it's not 
top of mind. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to close out our account. Hope everything goes well. Um, I hope I didn't do anything to like, you know, uh, you know, turn you off during the sales process um, and, and, you know, you know, share, share any information that, that didn't resonate. And, you know, you can kind of play that angle to try to, you know, pull up the emotional string and it goes very, very well over video when they can actually see you um, and you, and you take that approach. So I'd say those are some good um, prospecting. I just be aware of your audience, be aware of it's inbound versus outbound. Um, and I would say, start off always with a personalized video as a general rule of thumb. Maybe you drop uh, an informative video that's more generic halfway through the process. Um, and then if you want to follow up with a video at the end, um, not necessarily a breakup video or just, you know, one of the videos we use is um, it's a SDR team video. Hey, thanks for reaching out to Vidyard. Um, looks like you've been interacting with our content, but maybe it's not the right time to chat. Would love to stay in touch. Here's a link to our team calendar. So you can always, you know, get in touch with anyone from Vidyard at the time. And it's literally just me and my team like waving and just talking about the SDR team and, and, and how we'd love to connect with them and help them out. So it's, it's very just like we're here to help type of type of video. And that's kind of how we close things up. Cool. Any other use cases you kind of want to dive into? I know there was some some social media. Um, you know, we can uh, we can workshop that, but I'll probably need a little audience participation for that one to kind of tell me a little bit about what you're doing today, what you're looking to drive. So I have some context around how how we can plan that out. I think I also saw some customer success um, uh, approaches. Those ones tend to be less cadence driven um, because they're more so responding to customers' um, needs. You might have an onboarding cadence where it's like here's a first video that's going to be like a tutorial on how to use my product or service. And that's like a standard thing that all new hot new customers get in two months. Maybe there you have like an advanced version of that. It's like, Hey, now that you got the basics, here's how you can do the next thing. Um, so I think, I would think it, you know, just kind of taking the customer journey um, on and, and seeing how they can uh, and seeing how you can provide insight. I'd say that's very dependent on asking your customers and seeing your customers where they're struggling so that you can add video to support those, those requirements. If you find that all of your customers on the second month all have trouble with feature X, that's a great place to add a video and a cadence for onboarding so that you know you can preemptively solve that problem for them um, because you know, you've seen a trend that a lot of your customers have that, have that challenge. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, is there anyone who wants to be brave and and volunteer um, some some comments about what they're doing right now and and how how you think video could help? This is the time to ask. We've got some shy ones this morning. <laughs> hey, David, it's Mark again. Um, yeah. One of the one of the we 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 use the I think it what used to be called viewed it uh yep the original one of the one of the original tools a little bit totally. here and there and we haven't we've done you we have a lot more you know same more uh you know not one-to-one -one, uh video and so you know one of the things that i'm kind of conscious of too from a prospecting perspective is kind of the time and efficiency to make the videos i know you're you're balancing against roi you know and so you know just as a as a rule of thumb like how, how much time as an example you know, do the, you know, you know, I know when you first do that it probably takes more time and then later it, people become more efficient. Yeah. You know, but what, how does that, you know, how does that compare to, you know, to, to just maybe cold, cold emails as an example. Right. So just kind of curious on that side from a productivity and do you find then maybe, you know, part two is more for account based account based marketing, account based sales. It's a better fit. We have bigger targets that are higher value, or maybe you can t just give me some thoughts on that. Sure. And I'm like, we'll say scoping of like when, when to just go generic because maybe it's right that, that there's a little bit of a time commitment um, and you want to maximize, you know, your, your, those accounts. Um, so I will say, um, yes, you are a hundred percent correct that, you know, your first video is going to be clunky. It's going to be awkward. I remember doing it before I worked at Vidyard um, and it's going to feel uncomfortable. It's going to take a little longer. You're going to record it 16 times. You're going to say, um, at the very end and you're like, ah, I ruined it. And eventually, uh, you can dive into this right away, you'll get to a point where you just don't care. Um, and not to say that you don't care, you just know that the video hit the message, hit the mark. I'm sure I've said I'm um, a couple times during this presentation and, and hopefully it hasn't turned any of you off. Um, and that's just it, it's, it's your authentic self, it's who you are, you're sharing a piece of content with them and you wanted to take the time to make that person a video. So 
we have a sales rep at Vidyard. His name is Josh Kirkham, and I usually use him as an example because he is a video robot, and I have no doubt that he can bang through 100 videos in a day, all personalized. He literally, um, with the tool, um, you can hit, in, even in your Gmail, you can actually hit the Vidyard record button, pops it up, make your video, type your little message and hit send. You can also use tools like SalesLoft where you can have you know preset cadences. So my team will have cadences for inbound leads that are like demo requests, inbound leads that are webinar follow-ups. Like we have our cadences set. And generally what I've done in SalesLoft is I have a, if you're doing video, I usually keep the email short because I want people to spend time looking at the video, not trying to like put the video and then paraphrase what I'm, you know, putting in the video. Usually it's like, hey, hey Mark, I made you this cool video. Love to hear your thoughts. That's it. And then I'll give the reps context what you should put in the video. So I'll have a little bit of a script, but it, no one, it, it's more so not even a script. It's more like talking points, like elevator pitch. Here's what you want to say. Once you're comfortable with it, you'll literally just like, oh, I want to prospect Mark. Um, new email, cut, paste email, um, record video, blah, 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 blah. This is my message. Here's why I wanted to reach out. Got some information on LinkedIn. And eventually you will get to the point where however long it takes you to write a personalized email, you'll be able to record a video in relatively the same amount of time. I know that may sound like a stretch from where you are today, um, but uh, eventually you'll just get very comfortable. Um, and, and if you think about it, in this remote world, we're doing it all the time anyway. Like I'm assuming no one on this call spends six hours to prepare for a Zoom call um, and trying to rehearse a script to make that Zoom call perfect. You're gonna have talking points, you're gonna have an idea of what you wanna say, but it's gonna be very weird if you jump on a Zoom call to do a demo and you almost look like you're, you're kind of going through a script and it feels robotic. You don't want your videos to be that way, so having a little flair of nuance and, and yourself and personality is, is totally fine. Yes, there are some funky videos I can share with you. Um, I have one example that you know, someone literally like recorded a movie because um, they're doing something very, very specific and you can do those too. Um, those take a little bit longer, but the general prospecting video where it's like, hey, Mark, I'm reaching out to talk to you about this point. Saw that you uh, recently got a promotion or saw that your company is doing X. Um, would love to chat with you about, you know, how we've been able to help others like you achieve Y. Um, you know, love to hear your thoughts on this um, and let me know if you'd, you'd like to have a discussion about it. Like, that's it. I just, that's my video. I just recorded it. Done. <laughs> so eventually you'll get to that point. Great. Thanks. Yeah. Um, did that answer, I, I, I'm guessing that, did that cover that question well enough? I, I know it's, it's a little awkward at first, but, but uh, it's, it's more of just a drill and repetition type of thing. Yeah, that's kind of what I assumed the answer would be, but you know, I was, I was more, you know, I guess trying to validate it. So, totally. uh, but thank you, David. Yeah, great. Thank you for the question, Mark. Any other questions on video, video process, um, where video can fit in for you? Um, something that maybe I didn't cover that you, you're curious about. Um, I do have more, more stuff we can continue going through, but I just want to make sure that, you know, if this, this, is, this is the area where it's, it's, you know, we can, you know, workshop some ideas together and, and try to make it relevant to, to what you guys are working on. Does anybody want to uh, contribute to this part or are we ready to move on? I'll just wait to see if there's any hands or unmuted mics. Okay. Okay. If cool. there's questions about this, we can always come back. We, we have a Q and A section at the end too. And, and, yeah. uh, and actually, um, so the next section is actually be about best practices and, and Mark, I'll, I'll talk about, you know, how you can get to making the videos faster and faster and easier. Um, um, okay. In the next slide here. So I included actually, I'll jump here. Oh, one fun game to play for those of you that have sales teams um, and, and maybe a BDR or an SDR. It's something that I've done a couple of times to my team to, you know, test what is the like at the end of the day you're going to be spending tons of time prospecting and sending emails out and is it good is it bad i don't know but what if you flip what if you flip that expectation it works like i said you, you do need to have a bit of a sales team or even if you kind of just like really really self audit to look at some of the emails that you've been sending but really at the end of the day you're trying to understand what the customer's journey is what are they going through what is their experience so if you flip the sales process a process on its head and pretend that you're a customer for a second you know hit that demo request button on your website and with an anonymous email and just go along with the flow like does it feel good does it feel like it's personalized does it feel like you know was the response time okay these aren't necessarily video specific things um, but it certainly can give you an idea of how you can tighten up that process 
in terms of did it take too long? Did the email that you received seem very, very genericized and didn't really connect? Like, yes, you wanted a demo, but like this was, you know, this missed the mark um, in terms of the response. Cause you know, maybe, you know, we're pretty good at Vidyard for having templates that we work within. Um, but maybe, you know, you're, you're not there yet and, you're, and your sales reps are kind of just like, they have some templates that they use or they're kind of just like, you know, responding, you know, is it the experience that you're looking for for the customer? So, so try to role play your customer, see what they're going through. Does it feel good? Like if you were being prospected the same way or you were being reached out to for a demo request the same way, would you, would you enjoy that experience? And then you can start to really self audit and be like, you know what, this could be better. Or we should put a video here or, you know, this message doesn't even make sense because we're talking about, um, you know, X and the customer requested Y. So, you know, do an audit against yourself and, and just frame, frame the experience from the customer's point of view. Um, and you'll get a lot of really, really good insights um, as to how you can help the mechanics of, of your process there. Um, so I put this LinkedIn thing, uh, LinkedIn post, it was actually one that came up last week. I think I should have put it over about a quarter of an inch because it looks like the very first letters cut off. But um, Essentially what this is, is, uh, you know, we're going to talk about best practices and it goes back to one of the points I made at the very beginning in a, in a remote world, you know, the question that one of our AEs asked the sales team was, you know, take off your Vidyard hat for a second and imagine that you are now an AE at a completely different company. You are working, um, selling something completely different and you have a tech stack in front of you. Maybe it's Salesforce, maybe it's sales loft, maybe it's Vidyard, maybe it's not. But you know, what are the absolute core tools that you need to be successful as a sales rep in 2020? Um, and the actual question asked was, you know, would you be able to manage your pipeline and hit our team's quota this month without video? And literally every sales rep in the room was, was you know, up in arms. And, and that's literally what this post is about, is about, about, um, about. <laughs> and, um, and another example of a social media, um, to those that asked about, you know, what kind of social sharing can I do? Um, uh, one of the reps uh, literally um, created a video um, about that question and created her own personal content uh, about, you know, how she looks at sales, how she perceives her role, how she perceives selling in 2020, nothing to do with like Vidyard specific, just, you know, her experience joining the Vidyard team, how, how video has impacted her ability to close deals. Um, and this is an example of a social post um, where she was kind of responding to to a team meeting. And this is just, this is Ali's post here. So, you know, she's kind of covering a couple of things. It's like, hey, this is why I love working at Vidyard. This is what I've seen in the last little bit. Um, and, you know, I, it just struck me that, you know, how, yes, I work at Vidyard, but just how integral video is to our sales process that's helped me hit my number. Um, and, and like I said, G2 Crowd kind of found a stat where it's it's, especially nowadays, it's a lot more companies are, are considering some type of video to be integral and core, just like you would need a CRM, um, you know, to function in, in, especially in a remote world. So getting into best practices, you know, this is, the, like I said, I like this example because it does talk about that social use case. Um, yeah, I guess there's two frames of reference for the social use case. There's the me individual, I'm sharing this with my network, here's who I am. And then there's the, here's our company, here's what we do. Um, you know, here's a cool event we're gonna take place at um, and, and video can definitely help articulate both of those. But this is just, uh, a lot of my reps actually do this. They do this before conferences. Um, uh, if you're going to attend a conference, some of my reps will literally create a video like three days before and being like, Hey, really excited, um, to be at the IC a AICP conference, which I know is coming. Uh, there's, I think one that was last week. Um, we're going to be at our Vidyard booth. Love to chat with everyone in our network about video. Hope to see you there. Here's a registration link. Here's how to get in contact with us and try to promote the event uh, on social media using video. And LinkedIn does a great job when you're posting content because you can actually have the video displayed in line, um, right there on, uh, on, on your post. So again, not flat text, you know, text and video. So a couple of best practices that, that go a long way. And this is for social media. This is for your emails. Thumbnails are a great way to stand out. You know, we talked about video. What's the customer experience look like? What does this mean? Why do I, you know, why am I excited about video? And it's because again, it goes back to your message looking like this. Um, you can have a very simple message. Let's connect. Here's a video for you that I made today. And, and that's the message that you, you don't need to go through this long preamble and try to, you know, get your value pitch in. The value pitch is, is I made you a video. Um, you'll see that there's a chalkboard in there. We've kind of switched over to a whiteboard most of the time because it's chalkboards are messy <laughs> and whiteboards just seem a little bit easier. Um, but you can, you know, uh, you can even use a tablet, but these are great ways to, again, in the thumbnail, capture the audience's attention and show again that you have made a video for them. This isn't something generic, this is for them. 
if you're trying to broaden your net and maybe you want to do business with Vidyard, maybe that just says, hey, Vidyard. And it's like, I'm going to send it to different people at Vidyard so I don't have to make 30 one-to-one videos. You know, Mark was talking about efficiencies in video. This way I don't have to make 20 videos. I can make one still fairly on target and I can engage with everyone at a company. So um, thumbnails are a great way. And this is really what, what drives the video experience. It's the fact that it's not just a LinkedIn post anymore. It's not just an email. It's, it's you and you're smiling and it's now I'm interacting with the person. Much harder to close this and ignore it than just a blurb of text that's you know very, very long and, and, and I don't want to deal with right now. Because oftentimes people even come back to this and be like, oh, what was that video that I got? Or like, oh, I'll share it to my colleague because I've never seen this before. Or it looks neat. Um, and a great way to also spread that within the organization. Um, calls to action. You want to create the experience as seamless as possible. Um, so you can use video to create calls to action. So at the end of your video, you can have the video cut away and just exactly like you see here, want to know more, drop in a box. They can hit that. You can put like a Calendly link there so it connects to your calendar and people can book in with your time. Um, lots of great success here because you're just basically creating your video to be interactive. You know, obviously the video has a point. You're trying to get something out of that video and the call to action can be a great way to, to trigger the customer to see what that next step is or the prospect. Um, get them to book some time with you. Um, maybe it's a poll. Maybe you just want information like customer success use case. Maybe it's like, how have you been enjoying the, the onboarding experience with our product or our company? Um, what features do you want? Um, you know, we have a roadmap plan for, you know, 2020 and, and here's what's on it, which of these features are most important to you? And they can click that button, takes them to the poll. Um, but again, this is just, what are you trying to do with the video um, and helping the customer take that action in the least amount of effort possible so it's as seamless and the customer experience is as good as it can get. Um, you can also use analytics. This is an example of the screen recording tool. Um, and you can see you know, five people at you know, Art Critique Vit watched your video. You can also see 37 people watch the video. If you're sending one-to-one -one videos, you'll actually see like Mark Elliott has watched your video. If he starts sending it to a bunch of friends, then that's when it will kind of go to like five people, six people, seven people. Um, but if you do have, you know, if you are doing one-to-one -one and that person watches it, you'll get notified that, that, that specifically that email address watched your video. So the analytics are great. You can use them 100% in your sales cadence, call people out that like, hey, you watched the video. It, it, specifically, it works well for us. But it's, it's uh, we do a step in our, in our cadences called thoughts, where let's say I make a video, um, and Mark, here's another good one for, for you on driving efficiency. Let's say you wanna drop a few videos into your sales cadence, rather than making a personalized video, a couple days, call, email, personalized video. Our third or fifth step is literally just an email that says, what did you think of my video? And it's just, it's, it's a forward of the very first email. Um, and I'm just using the exact same video again with the word thoughts or what did you think? Or um, did you, uh, did, you know, did you have some free time to check this out? Something like that where you're just repurposing that step again. That works really well. Um, and then the analytics will show you like maybe you know, I know oftentimes you'll look at, you know, different tools and they'll give you open rates on the email, but this is even more powerful because yes, I, I opened the email, but did I consume it? You don't know how long they sat there reading your email, but you will know exactly how long they watched. Did they watch the whole thing? Did they watch the beginning and not the end? Get some really, really good analytics to see where your videos lie. For you social media users, this one becomes really helpful because let's say you make a three minute video and you see that all of your prospects are dropping out at the 30 second mark and you have something really, really juicy that's at the two minute mark, you may want to rethink your video to make sure that your, your, your audience's very short attention span um, catches the piece of relevant content you want. So how much of the video watched can be very, very helpful, especially when you're going broad net to make sure that your videos are hitting the mark and you're getting the content that you want them to see is being received. Mark, I saw you unmute for a second. I'm not sure if you had a question or. Yeah, so I was just gonna ask, um, you know, more of a sales process because it can relate to, you know, when you get your analytics on email around clicks or opens, right? Yeah. You know, where when you, you know, what do you have any internal best practices at Vidyard that says, hey, if, if we see these kind of, um, you know, analytics, we're going to, we're going to skip out of the cadence and, you know, do a call as an example or something else that would, that's not part of this, the, 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 the typical cadence where you say, hey, this is, you know, now that we're seeing this stuff, we know they're interacting with it. They haven't messaged us back, but what are we going to do that's different now that with this information? Totally. If you get a notification, because you'll have your, like, as you can see, I have my Vidyard um, in the top right corner. I have the, the, the plugin, which literally just brings up this recorder. Um, I do have a demo that shows you how to download the plugin, how to use it. If, if, if you're curious to learn more about Vidyard. Um, 
Uh, yes, our I'll say the SDR team, our inbound team, has a little bit more challenge with this because if I showed you their calendar, it looks exciting to say the least. Um, so their days are very, very like bouncing from calls to calls, and they're fitting stuff in when they can. So they don't necessarily have as much luxury as you know popping back. But I'll say for an outbound process, when you're trying to get engagement. Yeah, if you see someone like so and so just watch your video, so and so just watch your video, and you got two two phone got two two views, pick the phone, give them a call. Like they're like they're they're watching it right now. You can probably catch them because you're you're top of mind. They're looking at you, um, and 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 give them a call and then say, hey, I, you know, it looked like you were checking out my content. What do you think? Have a conversation. So yes, I would 100% put an interrupt um, call there, um, and then throughout the sales process, yes, you know if. I will say, yes, we have a cadence, but if, if we see they're not engaging with our videos, we'll go down one path. And if we see that they have been engaging with our cadences, we'll try to go to a more direct, um, what did you think of the video? Or did, you know, I uh, saw you checked out the video. Did that message resonate at all? Just looking for some feedback on on if, if that's something that you'd be interested in and just calling out the fact that they watched it. And, and how much do you, you know, I think this is a, one of the challenges too, with, you know, so I think some prospects, customers, know that there's analytics on email and different video and different things, you know, how much do you play on, Hey, I noticed you did this, you know, versus, you know, versus just kind of calling back and not referencing that they were engaging with, with something that, you know, it's where they're, they're now they're very conscious that you're tracking yeah. your interaction. So that's more of a, again, that's more of a general thing, right? So totally. I, I, I tend to err on the more, you know, I'm not going to highlight that, they clicked on this email two, three times and that's why I'm calling them, you know, I'm just yeah. calling them. So I, again, it's, this is just a, a general sales question, David. So. Totally. Um, so I will say, you know, being at Vidyard, um, I think I'm in a bit of a different position because I actually want to call out that you watch it three times because I'm also part of the value add for Vidyard is as a salesperson, isn't that helpful to know? Like that's part of the core functionality of Vidyard. That's part of the sales pitch on to why video, why Vidyard. So I'll say we're probably a little more direct about it because it's we're, we want customers to know that this is available to them and wouldn't it be helpful if you knew this information when you're prospecting. Now, when I flip the role, I'll say two things. I think we're in a day and age where you see cookie pop-ups all over the web. You're getting, like literally you go to a website or you go somewhere within two seconds. Like, you know, if I say sunglasses, I'm pretty sure when I open um, a browser, I'm gonna see a pop-up now for sunglasses and people are gonna try to be selling me Oakley's in the next five minutes. I, I think we're also at a point where we just know that we're being watched. But I agree with you, you don't want your emails to seem too big brother. It's like, hey John, at three o'clock on Sunday, you watched my video for 16 seconds um, and then stopped you know, d did that message not make sense? I think if you turn it into like a video interrogation, yes, you'll, you'll probably weird some people out. Um, but, you know, you can keep it really light and high level. Um, hey, saw that, you know, you, you, you'd taken some time to check out my video a couple days ago. Um, was wondering if you had any follow-up questions or if, if that content was on the mark. I think it's okay to mention it. And I'll say at Vidyard, we go in a little bit deeper because I, I'm, I'm trying to call it the analytics piece as a selling feature. For yourself, I would just you know acknowledge that I created a video, looks like you checked it out, um, um, and try to come up with your value add from there. So I, I, would, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't shy away from it completely. I, I just wouldn't like lean into it really hard. Great, thank you. Uh, cool. Um, and then this next slide is just about some um, uh, some other you know great tips um, and you know kind of this goes back to I think Mark to your your point earlier where it's you know I I wrote this here um, thanks Richard um, video does not need to be hard video does not need to be perfect and I will bang that drum as much as I can because I oftentimes people will see videos like the one I'll show you down here um, and you know see something that looks stellar and they'll be like well I can't do that. Um, you know, should I even try it? And the answer is is yes. It doesn't need to be that. There are people, you know, I'll, I'm not sure if anyone goes to the gym here, works out. I, I have intermittently throughout my life. But, you know, going to the gym and watch, and looking at the, the guy or girl on the treadmill who's like clearly, you know, spends a lot of time at the gym or, you know, is on the bench press or squat rack and doing like three, 300 pounds or whatever it is they're doing. And, you know, you're sitting there doing, you know, 120. You know, the only difference between you and that person is that person's been there for six months. It's not like, it's not a measure of like, well, this is the best person. Like if I looked at an Olymp like, like at an NHL player, for instance, I'd be like, well, I shouldn't even play hockey because I'm not that good. And that's not necessarily the right way to look at it. Um, they're an NHL player because they've literally dedicated their life to playing hockey and they 
have every reason to be there. It has nothing against you. Um, they just are, you know, 10,000 hours ahead of where you are. It's not to say that you can't learn. It's not to say you can't have fun. It's not to say you can't be effective with it. So I, I always kind of talk about video doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to be perfect. And, and starting to get into video, even if it's just one-to-one -one videos with a background like mine, you can also do some fun things, you know, talking about best practices. I have a colleague of mine who um, we have these little, you know, uh, VBot is our mascot. And we have these little, they're, they're called VBot or VBuddies where it's, it's a, a little plush doll of, of, of VBot. And I think he tied them hand to hand and made this funny little garland. And his background looks exactly like mine, only he has like six of these little VBot dolls behind him as his like funny talking piece about Vidyard. Um, so you can just throw something like that in. Um, maybe it's a cool poster you have behind you that, uh, that is, that's for you. Maybe you'd want to be like very, you know, professional business and you just get like a cool banner of your organization behind you. That, that works too. You can throw like a little flare like that in, but I'd say the biggest things that are important for video is audio and lighting. Um, you don't want to be, uh, it's a little counterintuitive. You want to be, if you're going to do video, you want to be staring at the window, not have your back to the window because if you have the back to the window you're gonna have tons of light coming in and it's gonna look not great um you want to be staring the window so you have light coming at your face and you're clear um and you look good same thing like i said i literally have a business card right here that has a little bit of painter's tape on the back of it so that i can just block out the silly light halo from the pot light above me and like that as you can see like that makes a big difference in terms of what what the quality of this of this looks like i said be careful that it doesn't dip down too far um so lighting is important, audio is important, you know, get like, I would say get a, you know, if you have like a nice set of, of a headset, use that. Uh, oftentimes you're, you know, the, the, the uh, we found that the camera and the, and the um, mic on the Mac uh, PC is, is good enough. Um, but like I said, don't necessarily benchmark yourself against someone else who might have a marketing team behind them, um, tons of budget dollars, a video, a video budget. Um, the reality is adding video to your cadences will 100% improve your results. Um, and, and adding video there and, and, and kind of taking the plunge will, will be super effective. It doesn't need to be this grandiose thing that, that is, you know, perform, that is, you know, has, has, a, has a budget behind it and, and all these awesome features. Have fun with it, be yourself. Um, and it doesn't, it doesn't need to be difficult to just, just dive in and you will find that it gets easier and better and better over time. Um, and then my last point there is, you know, personalize, 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 use LinkedIn to find information, use news articles, use personal connections. Hey, um, hey, Dylan, you know, I, I noticed you attend some sessions with Mark. Uh, Mark's a colleague of mine and I've done some webinars for him. Um, would love to connect with you as I see that, you know, you're a business leader about X, Y, and Z. That can be a great introduction right there and, and, and works really well over, over, over video. So use personal connections, maybe even a current champion in the organization. Um, Vidyard has a free tool. So if we know we're getting some engagement with, with one person in an organization, I've actually gone to a BDR and said, hey, Sounds like you've been using Vidyard for free. It sounds like you've been, you know, talking to you. It sounds like you've had some some great success with it. Can you make me a video on on how Vidyard or how video has helped your sales process process and helped your prospecting um, in your role? I'd just love to hear hear from you about that. Um, and would you mind if I share that with some of your team? And I, honestly, we've gotten a bunch of those, and it's great because then I can take you know your someone that you know or someone in that organization that knows that that everyone knows and use him as the video instead of me. Um, and, and you can do some cool things like that. Yes, these are a little bit more Vidyard specific, neat things to do. Um, but I, but if you can have, if you have a champion and you can leverage that champion to do something for you as a give get, um, get them to make a video um, that you can share, like very, very, very powerful. Um, I want to share this, let, uh, you know, Bridget, let me know if this, this works. I'll show you a fun example of a video where someone like really, really wanted to articulate a point. Um, I can also share um, uh, share this as a as an as a follow up item. But if if we want to take a look, I think it's only like forty seven seconds, and it's again, yes, you know, I, sorry. Yes, please do. Yeah, I, give it a go. You may have to stop sharing um, your screen if it doesn't start. Um, sometimes the video just needs to be accessed directly. Oh, it's working. We're good. Not sure if the volume will though. Can you, can you, is there audio, audio coming through as well? That's the, that's the big one. No, the audio is not coming through. Yeah, I'd have to, I'd have to change. It, it'll probably work better. Um, I'll send as a follow-up, but essentially the video is, is, you know, I'm a big fan on like challenger selling and you're really showcasing the problem. And what this company does is they have a software that's designed for 
um, sending notifications to your, you know, field mechanics and, and pipe repairs, you know, audit, audit, auditing against like uh, a work, uh, a bill of work. And so the joke here is, you know, she's sitting at her desk. They're basically saying, did this job get done? You know, it has her trudging out into the field, trying to find that technician and asking him to sign a piece of paperwork. And then the solution is, you know, rather than having to do that, the guy just pulls out his phone clicks yes I, I i got that 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 piece of, of work done and she's literally just sitting at her desk um and doesn't have to you know trudge out into the field in the cold to get someone to sign a piece of paperwork so that's their, their that's their value pitch it's like get away from this paper-based system here's here's a here's a, a good example of how um i hope i did a, enough justice kind of storyboarding it out for you with a few pictures but i i will grab the link i will post it in the chat right now um there it is david do you know bo or no? I do not know, Bo. Um, they posted this on TikTok, but actually, I believe the original video was uploaded uh, with Vidyard. Well, he's one of my old clients, so let me know if you want an intro. <laughs> oh, cool. Uh, I'd be, <laughs> yeah, that'd be interesting. I, I, I'm not sure. It'd be uh, on the BDR side. I'm very focused on new business, so when it comes to like all of our customers, I'm, I'm a little out of the loop. I yeah. noticed a ton of our SDRs and BDRs liked this and found it. Um, so I do believe this video was done and uploaded on their Vidyard, but then they put it on TikTok as like a fun sure. play because TikTok, you know, is another great social media stream um, for, for video. Yeah, cool. So I just posted the link. If you guys want to check it out with audio, I'm sure it will be much more compelling hearing it from them, but I kind of just storyboarded it through, you know, what they're trying to achieve in a, in a short little video that's 40 seconds long that I think does a great job at articulating, here's the problem that we help with. Um, Again, I'm sometimes hesitant to share these because yes, they are fun. Yes, they are great. But don't get caught up in the trap that like, well, I can't do that. Therefore, I shouldn't do it. Again, that's the guy at the gym who's been there for like nine months. And, and yes, he has earned the ability to squat 400 pounds or whatever crazy number he's doing. Um, you know, he has a lot more in place, whereas you're getting started. So find the easy wins for you. Find where you can start using video and, and build from there. Don't necessarily try to you know, the only thing that's going to happen if you go to the gym and try to squat 400 pounds is you're probably going to get hurt um, unless you've been doing it for a while. Cool. That's actually a very solid analogy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that's great. Totally. So that's essentially, you know, what I wanted to share with everybody today. I hope that kind of landed on the mark. I also have this, which is a video that, you know, we talked about types of videos you can use. I had my rep make a tutorial video for all of you. Um, this one's eight minutes long on how to download Vidyard, how to use Vidyard, how to record, how to see some of the analytics, um, how to get your videos from a recorded state into an email. Um, really just a quick tutorial on how to use our free tool. Um, I'll put that in the chat as well. Um, but this is a great um, example of, of another type of like, you know, tech walkthrough that you can use video for. Um, uh, yeah, there it is. Um, I think that I get it all. Yeah, video at Vidyard. Yeah, it showed up. It just shows up right directly under it. That's yeah, it. okay, cool. <laughs> um, so that's an example. If you want to take a look at, at Vidyard, um, I'm more than happy to connect with anyone on LinkedIn. If, if you have, you know, maybe you know, you're a little shy and you'd, and you'd rather have a conversation about, you know, video and, and your use case and you want to have a one-on-one -on -one chat, more than happy to help out. Um, but, you know, that's, that's what I had for today. Um, I'm kind of at the point where it's, you know, we can take a look at some questions and answers. I'm happy to dive into any questions one-off. Um, or you know anything that maybe I didn't cover or you'd like some more clarity on. Does anyone have any questions at this time? And, and thank you, David, for this wonderful presentation so far. Um, so if anyone has any questions at this time, uh, we still have uh, 30 minutes. If we end a little early, that's okay as well. Uh, give me back some time today. Um, but just so you know, uh, we will be sharing the recording for this session with all attendees uh, as a follow-up within two to three business days. And I'll include any links that David provides. Um, and uh, if you want to uh, be introduced uh, and, and a referral to David, please let uh, me know. You can contact me um, and I can uh, put you in touch. Uh, and alternatively, as David has said, uh, please feel free to connect with him via LinkedIn um, and, and uh, start connecting over on that end. Um, if there are questions, please feel yeah, free to I, put them in. I think Raymond uh, just dropped one in for MailChimp and HubSpot and integrations. Yes. Um, yeah. HubSpot actually is a very, very um, 
a prominent customer of Vidyard. We actually have a great partnership relationship with HubSpot. Vidyard actually comes included in the HubSpot platform. So if you if you buy HubSpot, um, you actually have a, a, a free version of Vidyard embedded within HubSpot called HubSpot Video. Um, that's powered entirely by Vidyard. Um, so, so yes, there's a great integrations with HubSpot. Um, MailChimp, yes, you can essentially, if you create a video, just like I have that link down below where it's Jordan's video, you can absolutely take those videos and add them to a MailChimp um, cadence. Um, you know, sometimes the word integration can be interesting because, you know, if, if you want like a picture of Vidyard inside MailChimp, yes, we do have something like that in Google Chrome. Um, I don't believe that functionality is there where it's like you can look at your Vidyard library right within MailChimp, but you can absolutely take like an embed code um, or a, a hyperlink with thumbnail from a video you've created and add it into your 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 uh, MailChimp um, cadence. HubSpot, on the other hand, yes, you have the flexibility of having video analytics right within the platform. The, the big use case usually I hear around HubSpot and Salesforce is I created this marketing video and now you know I have all these people cookied from my website. I want the video views from Vidyard to flow into my HubSpot, flow into my my Salesforce, so that you know if someone fills out a CTA or puts in a, a, a info about me on on the video, because you know maybe I have a pop up that says like, hey, if you want to continue watching this video, first name, last name, etc., um, that information can then flow into HubSpot um, or Salesforce. Thanks for that question, Raymond. Are there, oh, okay, uh, Richard is in the chat asking, do you have any success stories from any startups using Vidyard? Yeah, so, you know, as far as like dropping a customer name, um, uh, you know, I, 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 can, I can certainly find, find a ton for you, but I think the easiest story is we were in a position, I think two years ago, where, you know, we had a, a sales team um, and, you know, there wasn't really any segmentation. I think it was segmented by geography. Um, and what we we're finding is there was a lot of customers that, you know, maybe weren't getting the same attention as the, you know, 2000 person company, 500 person company, 400 person company. Um, and what we noticed is like, yes, we can help them. Yes, our product helps everyone along the spectrum. Um, but we wanted to, one of our, our, our sales reps at the time actually broke away and we broke our teams down into emerging markets and commercial markets. Emerging markets are anything from one to 200 employees. Commercial is going to be 200 plus. Um, and I can say that, um, yes, if, if you have a sales team, I'll, I'll share two, two things. Our free user setup has, or signups have gone through the roof since COVID started and if we it depending on what you're talking about from a startup if we're talking about a startup like one person two people three people our free tool or maybe upgrading to our pro tool for twenty dollars is 100 percent the way to go um, you don't necessarily have a marketing team making you videos and you want analytics from a sales manager to see who on your team is making video it's really just about you quickly creating videos sharing it with your prospecting to help your efforts our free and pro tools work absolutely fantastic in that space very very low barrier to entry to get to get started on that um, and 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 very easy to to use. Um, so I would say that's the, that's the ideal way to go um, and 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 use that. If you have a little bit of a bigger team, maybe it's you know three sales users and you want them collaborating a little bit more. Um, I can say that our emerging team loves working with you know 10, 20 person businesses, um, and we have tons of customers um, in that space. So much so that a team is now I think 14 reps strong. And like I said, they help everything from one to 200 employees. Um, and that team is responsible for, uh, I would say they do from, at least from my team, they do a lot of self-gen as well, but they're pushing through about 120 opportunities a month across that team. So in a quarter, that's about 350, 360 opportunities. That's not obviously all that closes, but it's everything from small to large. Um, you know, they're netting us maybe 50, 60 new logos in that space uh, a month. So yes. Tons and tons of startups um, can dive into video, and with the free tool, um, does not need to be a very, very big, uh, you know, cost barrier to entry. I would say probably use the pro tool. It's twenty dollars a month, but it at least lets you customize the background. So, like, see how we have the Vidyard logo here, um, and it's like our messaging. If you're using the true free tool, it literally has some drop-ins being like, "Hey, did you like?" Like, it's a little bit promotion centric around us. So it's like, "Hey, did you like the video above? Here's how you can start making these kinds of videos yourself." So it's it's kind of a play on us. Whereas if you switch to pro, you can actually have your logo here. Maybe your company color is like blue. So you can have the background to be blue um, and you can have some of your content in there and start getting analytics as well. If that was kind of uh, helpful in terms of, you know, where 
we fit in the market, some success stories. Um, it's not necessarily a success story of one customer, but it's 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 generally just a trend we've seen where a lot of th there's enough demand for one to two hundred person companies um, that Vidyard has a team targeted towards that and is being very very successful and, and bringing a lot of business. So so yeah. Okay, great. Um, okay, thanks, Richard. So he says yes. It answered his question. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Not so far. Okay. Sometimes it takes people a minute to digest the content. I understand that. <laughs> um, but uh, as I've uh, said previously, if you uh, would like to get in contact with uh, David, we can absolutely do that through a warm intro and I will be sharing the recording. Um, so if that's it for questions, um, I'd like to take this time to thank David uh, for joining us today and for this presentation. And I'd like to thank Mark as well of Venture Accelerator Partners for connecting us with Vidyard and uh, giving our clients this opportunity to learn a little bit more about your services as well as uh, get the tips and uh, best practices for uh, their own uh, goals and, and uh, what they're hoping to do with their sales process. Um, so thank you again for everyone for joining. Um, if there are no questions, I will end the session here and I hope you all have a wonderful Remembrance Day uh, and a wonderful week ahead. Awesome. Thanks for having me, everyone. I really appreciate it. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank Perfect. you, everybody. Thank you, David. Thank you, Mark. And thank you for joining us today. Take Thanks. care. Thanks. Take care. Bye.